I'm not even going to say what that speed was because <laughs> that is definitely way above the legal speed limit. That's all I'm going to say here. <laughs> Got to keep it cool just a little bit. everybody how are you all doing today i hope you guys are doing fantastic as always thank you so much for joining me today for another review here on the simply car things youtube channel and boy do we have a special treat of a car in store for today's review this is a 2018 mercedes-benz amg gtr now you guys know i'm a huge bmw fanboy i'm a big m car fan i drive a bmw m4 AMG is like the direct rival. In fact, my last video was literally comparing C63S to the BMW M4. Now, this is the first AMG that I've actually had the opportunity to properly and thoroughly drive. And man, I gotta say, this car is... What a way to kick off the AMG reviews on this channel, guys, because this is the GTR. It is a very special, relatively rare supercar, and it is designed to compete directly against the Porsche 911 GT3 RS. This specific AMG GTR is actually finished off in Green Hell Magno. It is basically the launch color. It's this really nice factory matte green, and it just looks absolutely stunning. Some people are not super crazy about the looks about the AMG GT. I've heard some comparisons of people, uh, you know, saying that they look like clown shoes and stuff like that. But personally, I'm a huge fan of the looks. I love the long sweeping hood. I love the low profile that it has and just the absolute sports car design that Mercedes-Benz has developed with this overall chassis. First things first, let's kick it off with this powertrain. Dear God, this is the M178. It's a bi-turbo V8. It is not the M177 that is found in the C63S, although that is also a, bi a bi-turbo V8. This is an exclusive variant specific to the AMG GT models. It is actually dry sumped. For the GTR, it actually gets larger turbochargers. There's a lighter weight flywheel, uh, and obviously that's going to help the engine rev harder. It's gonna help it rev out a lot faster and it sounds absolutely brutal. This is not a crazy high revving engine, 7,000 RPM is the red line, but the sound it makes, the absolute grunt that it has is just phenomenal. There's so much power with this V setup of the bi-turbos. There's so much power on tap, no matter where you are in the power band. That's the first thing I've realized off the bat is that relatively speaking, the power is actually kind of linear. It doesn't just hit you all at once like it does in my M4 and it feels so strong. This specific GTR is actually tuned uh, by a company called HD Tuning. It's basically a stage one remap on the car. It brings the power up to about 620-ish horsepower to the crank, and the torque figure should sit right above 500 plus. Uh, I believe stock, these cars are 577 horsepower, 516 pound-feet of torque, um, but like I said, 600 plus horsepower with the tune, and I would imagine based off of a simple butt dyno guesstimation that this is well into the high 500 range in terms of the torque values. So there is plenty of power, more than enough I would say, especially for back roads. I would also say on the track, this is plenty of power. The engine is menacing. You get a ton of induction note throughout the interior of the car. I don't know if you guys can hear, but this specific AMG is also equipped with a burble tune, which definitely ups the excitement factor and the fun factor, of course. You know, who doesn't love a little bit of some excessive burble coming out of their exhaust, but just such an angry exhaust note. It's 
really, really something special uh, that Mercedes was able to develop. And one of the other things that I love about this powertrain is that even though it is turbocharged, it really doesn't sound like it is turboed. It truly sounds as though it's naturally aspirated, in my honest opinion, unless if you're putting like race down pipes or catless down pipes on the car where you're gonna bring out that extra turbo spool, you really wouldn't know. It almost sounds naturally aspirated and that is something that is very, very impressive about this power plant and the way that the AMG engineers were able to tune the exhaust note and the induction sound as well. Now with the GTR specifically, there are some pretty cool touches. Not only does the engine have larger turbos, it makes more boost, but this is a seven speed dual clutch transmission and it is actually a trans axle, meaning that the dual clutch gearbox itself sits behind in the back of the car, basically behind the carbon fiber torque tube or the carbon fiber drive shaft. Even though the engine sits in the front technically of this vehicle, it is a front mid-engine car. And because of the fact that the gearbox sits in the back of the vehicle, the engine was able to move upward and basically it can sit behind the front axles, which obviously helps to lower the center of gravity and it gives it a more balanced weight distribution. And you can definitely feel it. I mean, we're just driving through some back roads here in Southern California on a really nice sunny day. And uh, wow, the handling is just phenomenal with this car. It actually has a coilover suspension with electronically adjustable dampers. And I currently have it in the most sportiest setting uh, in terms of the exhaust note, in terms of the engine throttle mapping settings and the suspension. And it just feels so dialed in. I love the seating position. You have excellent visibility throughout this windshield. One thing that is a little deceptive that I have noticed, and this is something that was comparable to the M6 BMW that I reviewed a few months back, is that this long sweeping hood, the way it sort of slopes down with the ride height rake that this car naturally has from the factory, it gives you the impression that the front end or the hood is a lot shorter than it actually is. So if you're driving around town, if you're daily driving one of these cars, it's definitely something to be aware of. Uh, you know, it can be a little bit deceptive. You forget how long truly this car is and the fact that you are sitting more towards the back of the car itself and you have the rest of the hood and just the long sweeping front end in front of you. Pretty much all the suspension components, the control arms, the knuckles, they are all made from forged aluminum. This is a double wishbone setup in the rear. In the front, again, we have that coilover setup with adaptive dampers, which is a really nice feature to have, especially you guys that follow my channel closely will know that I just put coilovers on my M4 and I lost the adaptive functionality, which, you know, I do miss a little bit, I'm not going to lie. The suspension feels very dialed in. It's firm enough to where obviously you know this is a supercar. It means business. It is designed for track use. You're not going to get the most significant amount of comfort out of it because it is the GTR variant and is not the GTC. But honestly, even in the sportiest setting, it's not that bad. I think it's quite evident that although the suspension is very firm, like I said, it's still been engineered and tuned into a way that obviously still leaves some refinement left on the table because the vast majority of owners of these cars are probably not going to be seeing the track. And if they are seeing the track, it's probably not gonna be very often. The majority of time this car will be driven is on the street. And although this car is very, very fast on a track, it has a low seven minute Nürburgring time and it competes against cars like the GT3 RS 911, I am actually really surprised at how relatively comfortable this car is. I was expecting it to feel a lot firmer. I was expecting it to feel a lot stiffer as well. But wow, it is actually pretty composed and that's something that's really, really nice. All right, so finally some of the traffic cleared up and looks like we finally have a chance now to sort of uh, take this car through some turns at a little bit of a quicker pace. And another thing that I wanted to mention as well in terms of a technical attribute of this car that is really, really nice is the fact that it has rear wheel steer. So basically there are uh, electric motors that can independently steer the rear wheels below 62 miles an hour to aid with handling they actually steer in the opposite direction of the front wheels and then above 62 miles an hour they are steering in conjunction with the front wheels uh, in order to aid with in like high speed stability and just overall comfort so the rear steer in conjunction with some of the extra torsional rigidity elements that have been added to the GTR, such as the carbon fiber roof and more extensive use of aluminum and just carbon fiber in general, have really aided the driving experience of this car. It feels so darty uh, in back roads. You can really turn the car in quite a bit. It's 
just unbelievable the amount of power that this car has. It's actually exceptional. And just the way that the steering feels and the way that you can just sort of plant the car in through these turns, uh, the directional feeling that it has is really, really superb. It has so much power. Really in these back roads, you can just stay in between like third and fourth gear and you really don't have to do much in terms of uh, you know, shifting through gears a whole lot. Here we have some relatively sharp hairpins that are coming up, but oh man, it's actually unreal. So the AMG GTR actually has quite a bit of extra aero added onto it in comparison to a car like the GT or the GTS. Uh, there is a carbon fiber rear wing. There is also some active aero in the front via some flaps that can adjust at low speeds to provide more downforce. And the way that the car puts down the power, traction control is rarely ever kicking in. We do have an electronically controlled limited slip differential here that can actually adjust the way power is sent to the rear wheels via your steering input, your throttle inputs as well, and a number of other factors. And because of that, the car actually feels pretty stable just going through a lot of these turns. I'm actually incredibly surprised. I thought the car was going to feel really tail happy. I thought it was going to want to step out on you a lot. That's a problem that the BMW M4 has, but in this car, it's non-existent, I'd say, you know, I'm not going crazy. Obviously we're not on a, tr on a track here, but still it's pretty surprising how good the power is able to be uh, sent or distributed to those rear wheels via that limited slip diff. The other thing is the dual clutch gearbox on this car is phenomenal. It's so responsive. It's not as punchy, I'd say, as the BMW M4 DCT, but in many ways that is actually really nice because it doesn't interrupt the power band of this car. <laughs> What a roller coaster. These carbon ceramic brakes, you step on them, six piston up in the front with that carbon ceramic rotor is just phenomenal. <laughs> just tearing this car up, guys. It's, I apologize, it's a little bit hard to speak at the moment, but. Oh man, this bi-turbo V8 is immense. Forged internals, it's a hot V setup with the twin turbos. It just has such an angry growl to it, especially on the downshifts with those burbles as well. And it just <laughs> feels so dialed in and so planted. And oh man, what a car guys, what a car. I'm not even gonna say what that speed was because <laughs> that is definitely way above the legal speed limit. That's all I'm gonna say here. <laughs> Gotta keep it cool just a little bit. Wow, wow. I hope the sound and the speed of this vehicle is being conveyed over camera guys because it's incredible at regarding how fast this car truly is. The carbon ceramic brakes don't seem to have any brake fade as well. It's impressive in that sense. Now that I'm really pushing this car, I would say there seems to be a little bit of body roll. I am in the sport mode, so I'm gonna flick it up again into sport plus. We'll see if that firms things up just a little bit more. There it is. That helps a lot more with the confidence of the car. The dampers feel stiff, but again, like I said, it's not overly stiff. It's just the right amount for the street. Although I will say that now I'm really, now that I'm really beginning to push this car in a way that I wasn't expecting to drive on this review, uh, I would like the dampers to feel a little more firm. I actually think that there's a little bit of body roll from the chassis that I wasn't expecting. But regardless, you can still drive this car so freaking hard. 
the steering feels so direct. That's what I love. It doesn't have the most feedback. It's not a hydraulic steering rack. It is EPS, but regardless, I mean, just the way that you can just, small inputs of the steering wheel allow the chassis to dart in at a really rapid pace. And because of that, you don't really need a ton of feedback coming from the wheel, especially when you're really, really pushing the car to its limit, which I almost feel like I'm doing so on these roads. I don't want to do anything crazy here, but. Oh, there's that rear end stepping out a little bit. Finally, I felt it. I sort of gassed it a little bit hard around that hairpin and I could see the traction control kicking in. Uh, I felt the rear end step out just a little bit. It, this uh, TCS system does enable the uh, car to slip just enough to where it's not an excessive cut of power, but it will still kick in to save you from anything stupid, which is good because this is my first time driving an AMG GTR and it's, again, very impressive. But wow. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> However, the suspension, and I'm not sure if it's maybe the way that the dampers are tuned, the valving behind them, or maybe the spring rates, or whatever it is, they're just not as firm, I guess, as maybe I would like it to be. And uh, that was a little bit surprising, actually. But again, is it a ding to the car by any means? Hell no. The power band is so responsive. The eagerness of this M178 and its ability to just rev out so fast makes it so enjoyable to drive. There's no lag. There's really never a point where you're you're like asking for more power you're asking for the turbos to spool any faster because all of that has just been set up out the box to be wonderful and with this stage one tune oh my god the power is is unbelievable it's it's scary in these back roads to drive this fast it's really really scary <laughs> Surprisingly, the other really, really nice unintended benefit is that even though you have a pretty substantial sized carbon fiber rear wing that is manually adjustable to aid in that downforce, it doesn't actually obtrude, it's not obtrusive to the visibility of the back end of the car. The way that the rear windscreen is designed actually does not block your view. You have excellent visibility from the rear, which is something that I really, really like because when I drove the 911 GT3 Porsche, the rear wing was completely in the way of the car. And that was something that can be a little bit scary. But again, you know, these are track oriented cars. And uh, for an enthusiast like myself, just an absolute joy to drive. It's hard to be critical about a car like this because these are the cars that you dream about owning. They're the cars that you want these manufacturers to build just because of how brutal they are and just how much rawness they offer, which is something that you don't see in cars nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> I think we're gonna wrap it up there for this review guys thank you so much for tuning in I know my thoughts may have been a little bit all over the place with this review I was driving very fast and it's very hard to talk while you're also ripping a car like this that is this expensive through some canyon back roads but nevertheless once again big shout out to Brent the owner for allowing me to drive this car and drive it as hard as I was able to do so we'll give it one last pull for good measure <laughs> make sure to check out his Instagram and his YouTube channel. I'll make sure to link all that in the description box down below. And with all that being said, guys, I will catch you all in the next one. Take it easy, my friends.